Thank you for listening. My name is Mike Strauss, a.k.a. Strauss 21. I'm a mixed martial arts journalist. I currently contribute to BJPen.com, Low Kick MMA, CageSidePress.com. You could find my work there as well as my YouTube channel at AK Strauss 21. And of course, the Did You See That Shit Mixed Martial Arts podcast that you are listening to right now. Here is my latest interview. I hope you enjoy it. I want to welcome Mr. David the Bulldog Mashad to the show for the first time. He is uh, has a huge fight coming up against Christian Aguilar LFA 59 February 1st. It's the co-main event. What is going on, my friend? Uh, not too much. Just got done working out, grabbing a bite to eat. What are you eating? <laughs> Eggs, tomato, turkey sausage, spinach, kale, piece of bread. It doesn't sound too bad. That doesn't sound too bad at all. Yeah, not too exciting either, though. Well, yeah, I hear you, but I mean, you do got a big fight coming up here on February first, so you you know you gotta you gotta at least uh, stay in shape heading into it. So you you've been at the lab now for, for a while, right? How, when when did you decide to move things uh, to change things up and go to the lab? Yeah, you know it was funny. Um, I had fought. I was fighting in North Dakota on a card, and my buddy Brian Barbarino was fighting, and I hadn't I didn't know him at the time. I had no idea who he was, but <clears throat> just looking. You know, looking around at the card, we saw him and he was there with John Crouch. And so my coach up there, he's like, hey, that's Benson Henderson's coach. And I was like, man, I wonder if I could get down there for a little bit and try to get some different training in. Because, you know, I was at a local regional gym, not too many pros. Um, you know, everyone who was a fighter, like, had other jobs. They weren't just fighters. I was one of the few that was only a fighter, so... I was the only one in there every day. So I was trying to look for something a little more consistent. So I asked Crouch if I could come down, drove down one day and just loved it. You know, I think, uh, I think the lab is probably the most underrated gym, and what I mean by that is obviously you guys are a fantastic gym. But when people talk about the big the big gyms, they they don't really mention the lab. And I think that's because you guys you guys have some of the best coaches in the world, but they're not media attention whores, if that makes sense. They don't need to have their name out there. They're they're very low key guys that do it better than anybody. And uh, yeah, all you guys at the lab, man. You mentioned Barbarina. Uh, I know Jordan Johnson's not really there anymore, but all you guys are just grinders. I just talked to Henry Corrales, uh, Courtney. Casey, you guys all have that same kind of grit that it's funny because you can't really teach it, but all of you guys have that same kind of mentality. Do you see that too there? Yeah, I feel like it's kind of something you are born with, you know, like some guys have it, like Brian, he's always going to be gritty no matter where he's at, Mm -hmm. but our practices also play into that. You know, we, whenever we're wrestling and grappling and everything's, everything's hard everything's tough so i feel like it's something that you need to be kind of born with but you can also help yourself out with it too for sure like by like like what you said like by the the kind of practices and who you surround yourself with yeah for sure and ben's ben is the i mean he's the best at that like everyone knows his cardio you know all his five round fights like he just does not get tired he'll just keep working 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 and just stay on you so Whenever you see that going on, you can't really, you know, be like, oh, I'm going to sit out for a little bit or I'm going to take it easy today. He keeps the pace high for everyone else. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, Benson, I think Benson's another guy that, uh, yeah, you're right. He's probably like that that for that for that first guy to really have that kind of that grit and drive. But uh, you got a huge fight coming up here, man. LFA 59, February 1st. It's the co-main event slot right now. Is it fair to say this is probably one of the bigger fights that you've had in the last, let's say, five or so? Yeah, you know, I've... I've been struggling to get fights. Um, uh, it's it's just been tough, so it's been hard to get guys with bigger records. I haven't really been able to get too many. Last couple of guys I fought haven't had the biggest records, but you know every fight's a big fight. This is good. It's gonna be on TV. It's gonna be good. Um, but like that last fight was with Combate, and they say they get like a million views in Mexico or something. So I guess that's cool. Yeah, you're, yeah, the last fight was uh, Combate Americanas against uh, Fernando Trevino Gonzalez. Of course, you you won that fight. You're on a three-fight winning streak, actually. I was at the fight, Bellator 204 in South Dakota, when you beat Corey Davis. That was a super impressive win, man, because Corey Davis is a very tough guy. But uh, I think that you're one of the very best guys out there doing it that isn't signed by by the UFC. And, of course, you know, you, you were in the UFC. You had a run, a very tough run, but I don't think you got a fair shake there. The deal that uh, you signed with Bellator, was that just a one-fight deal? 
Yeah, that was just, you know, they signed the local guys. So since I was from South Dakota, I got that one fight. Gotcha. gotcha. And I was I was hoping something would come of it, but I guess, you know, things didn't work out. You know, Bellator, they're, they're a great group of guys, but I don't I don't think they, they always get it right. I mean, uh, as you mentioned, they probably should have offered you a deal. They passed on Eric Anders, so, you know, a lot of times they don't get it right there. But uh, is the ultimate goal for you to work your way back to the UFC? Um, I wouldn't say that. You know, I'm just trying to – right now I'm just trying to make some money. So hopefully after this fight, if it's UFC, Bellator, uh, PFL, you know, whatever comes first, like – I'm I'm trying to make some money. So there's good guys. There's good fights everywhere. There's good guys in PFL. There's good guys in Bellator, and there's good guys in UFC. And I want to fight good guys, and I want to make good money. No, you're absolutely right. There's the talent nowadays, man. Is uh, it's it's really exciting to be a fan because just all the talent that is just spread out. You mentioned the PFL. I'm a big fan of their organization. Uh, seemingly, it looks like you know everybody did pretty well there. Uh, would that be something that would interest you? I mean, million dollars—that's a whole ton of money, right? Yeah. How? I mean, you think about how many guys in MMA made a million dollars last year. You know, less than less than thirty for sure. For I would sure. say absolutely. So. If I could do that, if I could get in there, get in that tournament, I feel like I definitely have a good shot at winning. So that would definitely be interesting for me. Yeah, I was going to say, as a wrestler, uh, I mean, one of the guys that won Lance Palmer has a wrestling background. I mean, that is almost tailor-made for a guy like you, right? That That's the yeah. tournament format? Yeah, and then, you know, like that first round. Well, I don't know if they're going to do it the same. A lot of people had complaints about it, but like that first round fight where it's two rounds you have to win the first round it's like well fuck just take them down the first round and then just run the second you know Mm -hmm. (laughs) so that i didn't i didn't like that i would like if they did more pride rules where it's judged on the whole fight i feel like that'd be more fair but you know they're gonna do what they're gonna do like if it if it does change the next season that's cool if not that's cool too because still fighting twice in one night is it's kind of badass (laughs) <laughs> I mean, to be honest, you know, not a lot of guys do that. Guys don't want to do that anymore. Yeah, no, I agree with you, man. I mean, every every fighter that I've had a chance to speak with that participated in in, uh, in the PFL, they all said the same thing, man. They loved it. They really enjoyed doing it. So, I mean, hey, I mean, you know, guys can sit on their couch and complain about it all day, but at the end of the day, it's the athlete. It's guys like you that are going out there and doing it. If you don't have a problem with it, it you know, actually, if you guys want it, then there's no reason why it shouldn't happen, right? Yeah. I, I agree with you, brother. Well, I, I personally believe, as I said, man, I think you're one of the very best in the world, uh, You know that, and it's unfortunately that you're not signed to one of the bigger organizations. I, I believe that you will be. Just keep doing what you're doing, man. 14 and 4, 30 years old. You're just hitting your prime right now, I believe. Is that a fair, uh, fair assessment? Yeah, you know, um, I feel like in fighting, it's not. In all the other big-time sports, people hit their primes, you know, like, 24 to 28 i feel like in fighting it's different because there's just so much that you learn there's so much to it so it's not so much the athletic prime but the fighting prime is a little bit later and i feel like i'm hitting it and you know i feel like i'm one of the best in the world so i'm just ready to go I agree, man. I can't wait. It's going to be a great night of fights. And, of course, you're right there in the co-main event slot. Christian Aguilar, David Mashad, LFA 59, February 1st. I'd like to give you a few minutes here to shout out your coaches, sponsors, whatever you would like. The floor is yours, David. Uh, Yeah, I want to thank, you know, the MMA Lab. Uh, Like you were saying earlier, I've been here about five years now, almost five years. And I just love it. I love my teammates. I love my coaches. And I wouldn't be able to fight like I do without them. That's for sure. Well, dude, I appreciate you doing this. I really do. I know that you're super busy. Sweet. Appreciate it. (laughs) 